Uh, I'm Pat Kowalik. Um, I am finishing up being chair of the U Division of Humanities, and I am a professor of art. And how many years have you been professor of art? Um, the I've been here at Pike for a little over 30 years. Fantastic. So one of our most senior faculty members. Yes. With, with time I think served. I can say that. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So as a kid, when Pat was growing up, did you say, hey, I'm going to be a long-term professor of art in Pikeville, Kentucky? Or you <laughs> want, what did you want to do? You, you know, um, I did get those questions earlier. And so I was like trying to go back. And um, I realized I didn't have anything specific in mind that I wanted to be. But I wanted to be good at something. I wanted to be um, significantly good in terms of um, some sort of accomplishment. And, and I was a fairly good student, so, so um, there was a couple of things that I was, I was good at math, and I liked to read, and I was good at art. And so, um, I didn't kind of finesse that into some sort of job for a long time um, until I got to high school and then like what is it you want to spend college with and, and it was mostly um, a series of eliminations like I couldn't imagine doing history for the rest of my life and I couldn't imagine uh, Math was sort of like a parlor trick, so it didn't seem like that was a job thing until I came to art. And I'm like, I had some advantages when I was a kid. I, I took classes out at the Carnegie Museum on Saturdays, every Saturday, so I saw a lot. And I thought, well, I could imagine doing this for a long time. So, sort of came in it through a process of elimination, as into what felt like, you know, you're going to get up every day, you're going to go to something and do something, and art felt like the best fit. <laughs> so, is there a dream job out there for you? Are you in your dream job? So, if someone would come to you and talk about dream job, how would you answer that? I'd say I'm in my dream job on uh, certain days. <laughs> like I have certain little windows when everything is clicking. Uh, when I uh, get to make art, um, making art is like magic to me. Um, I transform um, graphite or paint and I get to share that with somebody. You know, that they see something that I see in my head just by manipulating a pencil. And I think that's magical. And so when I, I like sharing that. I like um, opening someone's head to, they didn't think they could do it and suddenly something clicks and they can see it. Um, I like the magic of showing um, students the vision of other artists and how they perform magic. Um, so there are times in this job when um, you know, I'm the maestro and I get to uh, show people, students, um, this sort of magical journey. And, and that's it. That's all I need. I'm, I'm really happy with that. Um, it's not a 24-hour-7 thing. We all know that there are things like administrative and paperwork and grading, and, and that doesn't feed into the dream job quality. But the, the um, uh, creating, the moving my hand and making things happen, that, that's... That is magic that has never grown old for me. Hmm. So is there something that spurred you <clears throat> to the path that you're on now? Granted, you had an opportunity to take these you know, Saturday classes, yes. but was there something that really kind of spurred you towards this path? Um, there, I'm 
not sure that there was one specific thing. I had a lot of support. My parents were, you know, do what you need to do sort of thing. And so, um, which I don't think is an automatic thing. The idea of going into art is a little scary. I mean, who's going to, how are you going to support yourself, your kids and that kind of thing. So there's a leap of faith there. But my um, parents were also very uh, kind of supportive, do what you need to do. I had a couple of teachers in college that um, treated me with a lot of respect and what I was doing. And that gave me a lot of confidence in terms of um, deciding to want to make art. Um, Teaching for me is very intuitive, um, so it becomes a um, conversation one on one with somebody, and that becomes part of the exploration and the uh, generating of creativity. Um, it <laughs> that first year was kind of a disaster because um, I didn't. You come to the teaching room, with, uh, you know, the classroom with, you know, all these ideas. And, and, and some of the kids are kind of clueless, and so it takes a little um, time to sort of understand that language of communication. Um, but I, I just think I was really lucky. I just had a lot of support along the way. And um, I know that I'm... Um, really pretty talented hand and eye coordination. I can pretty much draw what I see. And, and, and so that opens a lot of doors because people are amazed and you know that kind of stuff. So I just had, it was never really hard. You know, it, it just sort of uh, flowed in terms of um, knowing I wanted to do art and the, the teaching part became sort of self-evident eventually, but I didn't know that right away. Mm -hmm. So today, obviously, a lot of life experience. You've been doing this for a while, so this is your thing. But if I were to say, hey, you know, Pat's call in life is, how would you, in one sentence, how would you summarize that? Um, to translate or transmit or to um, encourage that sense of um, creativity in both myself and in other individuals. Mm. And um, I think it's important to test that every couple of years, you know, and sort of see is that really where you're at right now. And um, so there's a sense of like questioning everything, but there's this process in making jewelry where you can make silver stronger by pounding it. So it's like if, um, if you pound your purpose in life every so often, it makes it stronger and it becomes clearer. And so I think that's good. So for you now, when you think about your call, in your job. Do you see them lining up pretty well? Yeah, generally. Um, I do. Um, administrative stuff can get in the way. I mean, and others. But, it's, you know, it's, sometimes that's the price you pay, you know, so you can do what you want. And uh, I have it well. Um, uh, the art area is um, has its strengths. Um, work well with other faculty. Um, so yeah, I'd say it, it is lined up fairly well. Mm -hmm. So in your life, you mentioned parents who said, "Hey, do what you need to do." You mentioned yeah. some college professors who showed you respect. Has there been a a, a person who's been most influential on this? journey towards what you're doing? I think that um, there has not been one person, but I think that there is a sense that there was the right person at the right time. So that 
in um, adolescence, there's someone who's supportive and kind and encouraging, and that as you get older, there's someone who challenges you and, um, you know, is this really who you are or is this habit? And I mean, even my daughter has been instrumental, you know, in terms of, you want to provide a good example in terms of what you are doing and why you are doing it. And, uh, you know, if you're holding her to that standard, you have to set the way also. So I think it's more, I know there have been several people at the right time, you know, that had to, um, were instrumental in keeping me on the straight and narrow of my path. So on this path, if someone was watching this or talking with you and said, turns out I want to be a professor of art, or I want to help people be creative and, you know, be, um, connect with others, making others creative, helping them be creative. What did you do to align yourself in this path? Um, I majored in art. <laughs> and um, I actually transferred in my junior year to another university uh, because one of my teachers at my first college um, felt that I needed a better school. So he, he kind of like... So I went to Iowa, and um, I worked in the art library, which was incredible too. So that gave me access to all kinds of books and all kinds of history, and um, they had a large history department, so it was easy to just go and sit in and see different thoughts and cultures, and, um, and there was museums. And I kind of tried to uh, afford myself of every opportunity to go to see things. And um, I kept sketchbooks, um, and I journal, and I just tried to keep it very alive in my head, what it was I was seeing, what I valued, and what I think about. And I took a lot of classes. and. Um, it needs to be, I think, an organic um, process where you're always kind of testing the waters and you're always reflecting and you're always, well, what do I think about that? And one of the best things that one of my teachers taught me was always ask the question, why? Like, why do you do this? Why is that important? And I think that was a good habit to get into. Um, teaching is part of that, that, uh, that being the professor. Um, and that came about, I think, like learning what your priorities are and what's important, but also listening, listening what other people it is that they want to learn and what values they have and being respectful of them. So I'm trying to sort of turn around what I got and share it that way. Mm -hmm. So obviously, life always presents some challenges and obstacles. Yeah. How did you navigate life's challenges and obstacles to overcome and to get where you're at? Um, I've been very blessed, okay, so that my obstacles have been um, clearly manageable. Nothing was beyond the pale. Um, but I think it's a matter of uh, going back to what you think is important and staying true to that. Um, I've had obstacles in terms of um, relationships like in my family my sister got very ill and she died fairly young and um, so you there's a question of like really art against dying <laughs> you know what are your priorities and what's important and um, But 
I think, uh, again, it's just going back to what it is that you value or what's important to you and using that as your guide stone for this is who you are and this is your strength. So now, with all of your years as a teacher, you've had all kinds of conversations with students coming to your office and saying, how can I pass art appreciation to, right, the, the great existential questions of life. So when a student comes in and says, you know what, I don't really have any idea what I'm supposed to do. What advice would you give them about how to help them find their call? Um, I think that that's actually very positive and very um, exciting because that means that everything's a possibility rather than you can't find the one thing. So I would say um, try everything. Try everything and see what fits. Um, have conversations with yourself as to what is important. What is it that you need to be a happy person? If it's money, then that, that which is valid, then you know you go in a certain path. If it's just I need to um, uh, be content, then you go in a different pattern. Okay, what are the things that you value? Uh, try everything. Ask lots of questions. Be curious. Uh, now's the best time to do that because you're responsibilities are probably a little more limited and so you can go out on a limb I think it's good to fail every so often because failing can be the best um, uh, teacher you know? and failing is just learning how not to do something <laughs> it's not it's not the end of the world it's just learning how okay so that wasn't the way to do it you know and I think read a lot to people um, it's a pretty exciting world and, and I think uh, people getting locked in too quickly um, can miss out on some of that so even if you know what you want to do I think it's important to also be open and experiment and try other things even if it's new food, new music, 